Hey guys, it's Derek with Horizon Firearms here, and I'm running a little late. The Facebook Live, for some reason, every time we do it, it takes a little bit to get all the equipment running right. We'll get that figured out. Uh, so what we want to talk about today is the 22 Creedmoor specifically. So we've been getting a ton of questions uh, about the 22 Creedmoor for a really long time, and it's a round that we've done since 2014. And so what we wanted to do is kind of I don't know, there, there's just been a lot of stuff with the 22 Creedmoor forum that we start, or not the forum, but the 22 Creedmoor group that we started, um, where I see a lot of guys asking barrel twist questions and bullet questions, and there's just some general uncertainty with people uh, on knowing what twist rate and why, and you know why is that important, and, and that kind of deal. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of show you why we do what we do, twist rate rise, and I want to preface this by you know, this is as fact as I can get, but there's obviously always opinions. Everybody's going to have, um, you know, their way of doing things. Other gun builders are going to have their way of doing things. And so I thought it would just be good for me to kind of confirm why Horizon does what we do on the 22 Creedmoor and then answer some of the questions that we uh, had, have gotten uh, just this week about different things here. So kind of what I want to start with is twist rate. All right, so what we're trying to do with twist rate is we're really trying to stabilize the bullet. And so now, a couple different things with that. Good stability does relate to um, having the correct BC. So a lot of times if a bullet's not spun fast enough, it may not be stable, and then you may not get the BC downrange, and you may see yourself doing uh, ballistic correction. So it is important, um, but kind of what we look for is really a stability factor of one or better. And then uh, you can argue that more stable is better or worse, but um, twist rate also kind of affects pressures, which affects speed and velocity. So a lot of times, you know, what I'm wanting to do is I want a bullet that's stable, but at the same time, I'm trying to get as much velocity as I can get um, because, you know, we're looking for that high, high BC, high speed uh, for, you know, long range shooting. So what I want to do at first is show you generally what the, the formula is for stability. So essentially, it's this big, long, complex uh, formula, and a lot of people will argue, and we, you know, is essentially, uh, I don't need as fast of a twist barrel because I'm shooting X, you know, speed, and they, and they, you know, counteract each other. That is true-ish, but not perfectly true in the sense that velocity only affects stability in, in the denominator of the equation and in two different places. So one. Uh, what we call the pitch moment, and two, the general mu muzzle velocity. So it affects mostly the pitch moment uh, the most. And, and I'm going to kind of try and try and cowboy explain this the best as possible. Essentially, when you look at a bullet, terrible drawing of a bullet, it's gyro stability, and it's like more or less like it's mathematical stability. You have two points, right? And so the closer we can bring those two points together, the more stable the bullet's going to be. And that pitch moment is it, this part of the equation is how velocity, and it goes into this part of the formula, that's how velocity affects um, the stability. So a lot of times what, what we thought early on is that we could chase high, high velocities and spin the thing quick enough to, to affect uh, stability more than twist rate, and that's not necessarily the case. Tw uh, velocity does help with twist rate, or with, with, with uh, stability, but not at the same factor that, say, twist rate does. All right, but I'm at the same point, like I said earlier, I'm under the same point that, you know, once you get a, a, a stability factor of one or above, um, you really are stable enough, and now I try and personally chase velocity, which is why you see us doing a lot of one and eight twists and one and seven and a half twists, 22 creep more, versus a lot of guys running six and a half um, and seven twist uh, creep more. So, Kind of to pause for a second there, I wanted to, to kind of write down and give you some just general concepts and walk through how this really relates in, in real life. So what I want you to walk away with is, is a couple different things here. One, these uh, jbmballistics.com, they have a basically a stability factor calculator on their website, which is super awesome. You can measure your bullets, put it in there, and you can come up with your stability factor. It even color coats it from edge to, you know, from basically red, not stable to green, super stable. 
And that stability um, is also affected by the temperature, the pressure where you live. And so your bullet may have a different stability factor, the exact same bullet, you know, where you live in Colorado versus where we are in Texas. That's just something to think about. It's kind of a cool exercise to go through and play with. And I think it just gives you some you know, confidence on picking you know, the barrel twist rate that you're going to run. All right. So going with that and kind of along those same deals, I went to their website. We plugged in. Uh, we took the 88 grain Hornady, uh, the ELD M bullet, and then we basically worked down through uh, through a couple of stability factors. I'm just going to write them down and kind of show you what we what we got here. So one, so twist rate, we did an eight, a seven and a half, a seven, and a 6.5. All right. Now what we did first is we said let's throw out real life conditions and uh, and say that we can actually shoot this bullet the same velocity in all twist rates, which we know is not true because one, you start ripping the, you start through, through the 88 grain development before it was released there. What we saw is we would see issues with the jacket in this kind of twist rate with, with high velocities. Um, but so let's just assume the bullet stays together and we're going to assume um, 3,400 feet a second. Excuse my chicken scratch here and eight twists, and we basically used about 50 degrees in, in Texas uh, uh, altitude. So we got a stability factor of 1.396 with the eight, 1.589 with the seven and a half, 1.824 with the seven, and 2.115 with the six five. Okay, so a lot of times, that's why a lot of times that you see these high weight bullets, the SMK 95, the 88 grand Hornadies, with that particular stability factor. Now, you have to have that, you know, people may argue with me, you have to have those fast twist rates if you're going to run a 223 or you're going to run a, a 224 Valkyrie to get this bullet stable. But the nice thing about the 22 Creedmoor and why we've loved it for so long is we do have that weird little exponent of velocity where we can get away and, and actually generate a number over one in an eight twist barrel. So what we what we're saying is, yes, obviously twist rate does matter. You get a more stable bullet affects BC. But what we see a lot of times, real world conditions, is the bullets have issues keeping together at the velocities that you can really run in a 22 degree one. So what we did is we said let's assume that real velocities instead of 3400 in a seven twist we're only going to run 3300. Now. People may push it and get more, but let's just for argument's sake. And let's say on a six and a half, we're only going to run 3250. All right, that changes those stability factors to 2.083 and 1.806. So what you can see is how 100 feet of velocity does affect the stability factor. It didn't do it by a whole lot. So what I'm really looking for is, it, you know, so when I look at this chart, I say, yeah, okay, um, can I get it more stable uh, with, a, with a faster twist rate, slower twist rate? I start thinking, what bullet am I going to use? So I really like Devarman Hunt. I'm not shooting the 95s. I'm not shooting, I'm really not even shooting, um, you know, the 80 and a half so that much. I'm shooting 75s and 80s, and sometimes these 88s because I'm a Varman Hunter or a Deer Hunter, and I, that's what I use this bullet, this gun for. It's really what we developed it for. So we like to run low, low pressures, lighter weight bullets that don't require quite the, 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 uh, quite the, the, the stability factor. So one of the questions we got was if I'm running 80s or 75s, what, what twist rate do I want? Me personally, we're using the eights. Um, sometimes the seven and a half, the guy thinks he's going to run, uh, uh, you know, maybe he's going to run that 95 um, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll cheat up and go a little bit on that just because heavier bullets need a little more twist to get a little more stable. So what we like to do is run the eights. And we run the 88s all the way up uh, in the eight twist with no problem. In fact, we got a customer when the 88s were just a prototype bullet, um, first animal ever killed with them was a coyote at 535 with an 88 in a uh, uh, one and eight twist, 24 inch gun. So very much doable. Um, but what I like that I've seen on the on the 22 Creedmoor uh, forum is guys are not even though SMK says that you need the six and a half, I like the fact that we I see a lot of guys running the seven and seven and a half. So they're going to run the heavies because it's giving them a little bit more room. I personally wouldn't want a six and a half and then take it out as my varmint gun and shoot seventy fives. So 
you know, that's why we usually cheat in this round in order to give us the most versatility for the firearm. So if I'm building an exclusive PRS gun, I'm still probably going to use a seven, seven and a half. Um, if I want more versatile, I'm going eight and seven and a half. All right. So um, in that, one question the guy asked was, if I go shorter, do I need a faster twist rate? And interesting question, I run a 16 and a half inch barrel, eight twists, um, and I said 80s and 80 and a half burgers, 75s. Um, and I've seen absolutely no problem. We run the gun out to a thousand. I've got plenty of stability factor. Um, I just like the fact that I could you know, run 62s or whatever if I wanted to with that particular gun. So technically, as you get shorter, your velocity goes down. So your stability factor goes down. I would encourage you to plug it in JB, uh, uh, JBM Ballistics and see what you get for your environment. But I wouldn't worry about it if it was me. I would still do that eight twist. Well, that's what I did do. Um, but yes, from a technical technicality standpoint, you're exactly right. You might want to cheat up just a little bit on your on your twist rate. Um, like I say, so then the other thing I'm going to kind of, and then we're going to move to a different topic here. The other thing that I did is I looked at and I said, okay, if if I'm going to run the SMK at six and a half, um, and let's say, or let's say I'm going to run the, 80, the 88s, and I'm worried about pressure, worried about jackets, um, you know, so I'm going to have to come down on my velocities. And so what I did is I actually went to the um, to the forum there and or to the Facebook group there, and I found I can't remember which guy it was is running the the uh, the 95s out of a um, 25 inch gun and then we have the 88s in a 24 inch gun and I basically pulled the velocities for both of those rifles and then I ran ballistics so that you can see how much difference so the guy's worried about which bullet to shoot uh, at what twist rate this is kind of what we did so that you can you can kind of decide what you want to do there so um, real world what we per personally shot at horizon with the 88 grain Hornady we shot 3377 and that's at 24 inches um, with a one and eight twist. All right, that particular gun, that's the gun I talked about. We shot the Coyote at, uh, at 5, 585 or 535 with. All right, so at 700 yards, that gun, I'm gonna do my drop, and I'm gonna do my win like this, and I apologize for all you gun guys, I did do this in inches instead of milling in my way just so we could all kind of talk numbers and sets here. So, um, Basically, with this particular rifle, my G1, and I, I personally hate the fact that we're using G1s. I've seen a little better luck with G7. Uh, Sierra does never publishes the G7, so in order for me to compare them, give a fair comparison, I ran the G1. So this bullet is a G1 of uh, .545, which is pretty awesome for a 22 bullet, actually. Um, we got 72 inches of drop. And we've got 26 inches of wind drift at 700 yards. That's a 10 mile an hour wind. All right. So then what I did is I took the 95 grain SMK and I said, okay, um, the guy on the forum was doing 3280. So let's see here. And we have the G1. They published six. I haven't shot them yet to believe it yet, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, 700 yards. We've got a, it's got a 74 and then a 24. So you see the, the 88s, we have less drop and two inches more wind drift at 700. So very minimal. Um, the other thing we did is I took another guy's uh, speeds that he had on the forum with that same SMK at 31.38, at the same distances, so at 700, with BCS 6, and I ran 82 and 25. So you see that SMK with that BC, a little bit better BC, very comparable in the wind drift, you know, within a couple inches, um, but your drop is greatly affected by the speed, which, you know, I, don't, I didn't see which twist rate he's running, but you know, you may be able to get a little more velocity by going with a little less, a uh, little a little looser barrel to bring that up. And then you really have, you know, kind of that bullet where you want it. So um, that is really how spin drift, um, and be sure to ask any questions as you've got questions going on. But that's really 
our thought process for pick and barrel twist. So I, I, I know I didn't give a lot of answers, but I, what I wanted to do is explain our thought process behind it. Because what my hope was is that we want a lot of people shooting this caliber. It's something that's really uh, means a lot to us because we've been involved in it for so long. Um, so I see on the, on the post all the time, guys seem concerned about what to do. So I just wanted to just blanket give some information to help you kind of bracket down what you would want to do. Again, I'm shooting the eight and the 88s. That's, that would be the way that I would go. If you're worried about it, do the seven and a half, split the difference. You'll be totally fine. I would just be concerned about running six and a half. If you're going to run the small bullets or if you're trying to get real velocities, that's, that's where I'm going to end, uh, end with that. Then I've got a couple more questions that we came that, that came in this week. Um, let's see here. Okay, so you talk about do the do the eighties and touch ninety fives twist rate. We covered that. Um, what would be a good general freeboard? Keep the rifle with eighty three board. Okay, so a freeboard question. Um, man, that is interesting. <laughs> so in, in terms of freeboard and what you want on the on the actual reamer. The reamer that we use is really, really close to um, what PTG calls their no-turn neck reamer. Um, and we standard throat it at that. That's what we've always used. Um, and then we basically run the Hornady's just barely kissing the rifling so that they're not so far in there that it's tight um, and then build up pressures there. Now, if you, if you free bore, um, you know, it's just not something we've messed with. Yes, you can get a little more velocities because you relieve some of that pressure. Um, but I'm not sure personally that you have the case capacity to really get um, exponential because, you know, we run into jacket issues at, at velocity a little bit. Um, what next size are you cutting these down with alpha brass loaded rounds? What does alpha case measure loaded? Okay, so talk about that. I personally have never used and don't use the alpha mainly because we work with um, uh, Peterson. So we actually have Peterson. 22 Creedmoor head stamp brass. I don't know if you can see that, but that is what we use. And you can you can actually get uh, that through us, or you can get the loaded rounds actually through um, through Horizon. We do 75s and 80s right now, working on the 88s and 80 grain burgers. Um, but that's what we use. But what we'll see, and what what I've heard about the Alpha, what you'll see with the Peterson is that thicker brass. You've got to download so that you don't create so much head pressure. So you know, and if you're running uh, 45 grains and Hornady brass, you may only be running, you know, 44, 44, two in, uh, alpha or, um, Peterson because of the thickness to create the pressures. Um, neck sizing. All right. I don't know if you can see this real well, but I, we absolutely despise bushing down. Now you can do it and I know people are doing it and we did it forever. Um, but here's the issue that you fight with, with bushing dies. Uh, and I don't know if you can see this, if you can see that ring, whoop, that ring right there in the middle. So what we did is actually ammunition loaded by somebody else, um, and we marked it because it was sticking in the chamber. And what we found out is they were using bushing dies. And that bushing die, um, 253, 252 is what most people use. Um, but when you run that, you'll end up getting that dreaded donut in the transition between, especially if you're using like 6.5, brass taking it all the way down you'll get that dreaded donut which will give you kind of a fake headspace so you'll feel like your headspace is super tight or your bullets touching and actually it's created with that ring right there so 252 253 is what i would expect you to use in the bushing i highly recommend against bushing dies we went early on like early 2015 and went to widen and actually they have a horizon firearms 22 cream more set it's a full length cedar sizer um, that, you know, that we, that we do and that, you know, you can see that solves the donut issue made for way, way better, e easier load. You can go six, five all the way down. Um, so let's see traditional hunting boy, like two, two, four. Um, so looking at Matt, is anyone talking about making heavy traditional hunting bullets in two, two, four, like an 80 to 80 grain X? Um, so that's something that, that all I can say on that particular issue is I would expect that you will see something like that um, happen. I can't, tell, I can't necessarily say exactly when, um, but we are testing bullets, you know, all the time with, with different people. Uh, and I would expect that to be something that you'd see in the year or so. 
Um, you know, I wouldn't say exactly when. I will say that we have shot from different manufacturers um, bullets in that weight grain that I would consider traditional hunting bullets for absolutely for sure. And what's cool about that, um, we've shot them on coyotes and shot them on deer. We got great performance on deer all the way through blood trails, which you typically aren't getting with these match grade bullets. Match grade bullets are going in, blowing up. The deer's usually stomping right there, maybe 10 yards or so. But you blood trail on game a lot of times is not so good with the match grade bullet at these velocities. Now, on the flip side, <laughs> the, the hunting bullets that we've shot on Predator are passing right through, which is great for keeping, um, you know, keeping hides. For me, uh, when we started doing this round, we were shooting 22 to 50s in predator competitions, and we wanted a, a round that would basically anchor the coyote right there so that we weren't spending as much time trailing or looking using a 55 grain, you know, VMAX. And so when we could use a 75 AMAX at the time at almost 3,500, hardly any coyotes ever walked away. Uh, and so Actually, the hunting bullet on the Predator wasn't as good for me personally for what I like to do, but it was phenomenal on the deer. So keep watching for that, but I, I got a feeling that you'll see that shortly. Um, see, minimum length stability. We talked about that question. Hope I answered that. If not, let us know. Um, also, it says bar barrel makers make <coughs> excuse me several different options of grooves um, in, in lands in the rifle. How do I pick the best option for this caliber? Man, there's a lot of literature out on that, and there's a lot of hearsay on, on what's good and what's bad. We've ran threes, fives, fours, um, and, and if I had to pick, I like the concept of a five group. Because essentially, um, what, he's at, what the question he's asking is, you know, uh, if I can draw this, you basically with a five group, what you have is you don't have opposing, um, opposing rifling touching the bullet. So you get less deformation of the bullet, um, you know, and, and some people will argue that you get a little more velocity because it's not so tight in the bore. You know, we like fives, but I don't know that there's one that I would recommend against. That's, you know, whatever you found the best best deal. And I'd be more concerned about the twist rate than, than the actual amount of rifling. What do I think about progressive or gain twist barrels? There's not, in my opinion, enough information about it. You know, we follow that in some. And then when you ask that question, I went and looked some more. You know, when we worked, you know, talked with you know, Benchmark some, and some of these cut rifle companies are trying to twist from, say, like a like an 8 to a 7.5 or 8 to a 7.8. Um, I'm not seeing it be a major thing. Um, you know, I understand why, but, you know, if it was, I mean, be honest, if it was a great deal, and I'd try one, but... Um, I'm not seeing enough about it to say that that's what we would do at Horizon. Um, what about carbon fiber barrels in this caliber? What is the minimum length? Um, okay, so I love running this caliber short. Um, we actually have a lot of 16 and a half inch proof research barrels in stock specifically for, uh, and they're one and eight specifically for this caliber. Um, so, you know, the carbon fiber, you can go as, as short as you, I mean, we had a special order of a 16 and a half. It's not something you can just go fine usually. Um, carbon fibers typically come in two inch increments, but I would, you have no problem shooting at 16 and a half. We've done several 16 and a half inch guns. Um, let's see. And I guess the only other thing uh, people asked us about was what about the 22 Creedmoor barrel action deal that you've got going? How many are left? Uh, we do have a few of those rifles left. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing a stiller action and a 24 inch non fluted benchmark barrel our hand lap made it up um, so it's a horizon firearm setup build and that rifle um, is running 15.99 so basically you'll need a trigger drop it in rings and bases and you'll be ready to go but it's done and treated just like all other horizon firearms rifles um, but that's the that's what the 22 creedmoor barrel action project is um, you know, like I said, it's premium, it's not cheap parts, it's not, you know, whatever XYZ brand of barrels, it's it's benchmark barrels. Um, so it's a smoking deal if you're wanting to get in the 22 Creedmoor world. Um, the Prowler that's available on the Europix website. <clears throat> okay, so some of you guys have watched, we uh, work with Predator Pursuit and Jeff Thomason, the guys have been shooting our 22 Creedmoor in about six, eight months now. Um, we basically did a rifle series with Predator Pursuit that's exclusive through your optics. And so you can go pick up and it's a great deal 
um, you know, on, on that particular rifle is, like I said, it's a project that we work with, your optics. It's, I believe, $34.99. It's a 20-inch gun, fluted, uh, Magpul bottom metal, uh, Trigger Tech trigger, all set up. And all these guns, you won't see it on their website. You may be able to ask them for that on a particular rifle. <coughs> but these rifles are shot just like all our other guns. So you look at the birth card, you'll see the three-shot group. The one that I know that they've got posted right now, um, I believe that gun was in the 0 0.25, 0 0.3 uh, with the 75 grain loads that we do. But they're great guns. They're Horizon Firearms guns. We back them just like anything else, but they're available exclusive through your optics. Um, brass update. So we got about 11,000 pieces of the Peterson brass up front, and we were kind of holding that, that brass uh, until we get the next batch, which we expect to be, uh, I don't know, maybe the mid-December, right before SHOT Show, expect maybe twenty to 50,000 pieces of brass there. Uh, the 11,000 pieces, we uh, put most of that towards our ammunition. So you can get uh, basically Horizon Firearms, Blackwater ammunition through us with Peterson brass ready to go. If you're some guys looking for some of the, the specialty pieces here and there until that lot comes in, uh, contact us. But those brass are going to be around, well, actually they are going to be 91 See, I wrote down here 91 cents uh, per piece on the brass, and I believe those come in 100 round kits. Um, then on the uh, the loader and ammunition, what we're doing is uh, in 20 round boxes is 37.99. So 70, uh, yeah, 30, yeah. Excuse me, <laughs> 37.99 on the 20 round. Basically, um, we're trying to get people into a 22 creed more loaded ammunition don't want to do the, the, the reloading, they don't want to do the die sets uh, in a price range comparable-ish to as close as we can get with premium brass to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Because, I mean, like I said, we want people shooting it. We want questions like this. Um, we love the, the caliber, and I think it's super fun to see all the guys on the 22 Creedmoor forum who have really uh, started to kind of create a little community there, sort of against the 6.5 guys, which I really enjoy. But, and guys, I appreciate it. I hope we were able to answer all your questions or at least give you um, some spots to go for, um, to, to you know, look up some information, to get confident about the rifle that you build. As always, check us out, horizonfirearms.com. We have an awesome Instagram and Horizon Firearms. Um, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about the 22 Creedmoor or any other rifle project you've got going. Appreciate it. Have a good day.